Well, those no-neck monsters hit me with a hot butter biscuit, so I have to change. What's that, Maggie? Water's on so loud, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> well, I just remarked that one of the no-neck monsters messed up my lovely lace dress, so I have to change. Why do you call Goofus Kitty no-neck monsters? <laughs> Because they got no necks. Isn't that good enough reason? Don't they have any necks? <laughs> None visible. Their fat little heads all set on their fat little bodies without a bit of connection. That's too bad. Yes, it's too bad. You can't ring their necks. They got no necks to ring. Isn't that right, honey? Yeah, they're no neck monsters. All no-neck people are monsters. Oh, you hear them? Do you hear them scraping? Oh, I don't know where their voice boxes are located. They got no necks. Oh, I tell you, I got so nervous at that table tonight, I just thought I'd throw back my head and utter a scream you could hear across the Arkansas border and parts of Louisiana and Tennessee. <laughs> said to your charming sister-in-law, May, honey, couldn't you feed those precious little things at a separate table with an all cloth cover? These cloths look so pretty and they make such a mess. She just made enormous eyes at me and said, oh no, on Big Daddy's birthday, why he would never forgive me. Well, I want you to know Big Daddy hadn't been at that table more than two minutes with those five no-neck monsters just slobbering and drooling over their food before he threw down his fork and shouted, For God's sake, Goofa! Why don't you put them pigs in a trough in the kitchen? <laughs> well, I swear I simply could have died. Think of a break. I got five of them. Number six is coming. Well, they brought the whole bunch down here like animals to display at a county fair. How oh, they got those children doing tricks all the time. June, you show Big Daddy how you do this and show Big Daddy how you do that. That goes on all the time, along with constant little remarks and innuendos about the fact that you and I have produced no children, are totally childless, and therefore totally useless. Of course, it's comical, but it's also disgusting since it's so obvious what they're up to. What are they up to, Maggie? You know what they're up to? No. I don't know what they're up to. I'll tell you what they're up to, boy mine. Yeah. They are up to cutting you out of your father's estate. Yeah. And now we know Big Daddy's down to cancer. There's so much light in this room. Do we? Do we what? No Big Daddy down to cancer. Got the report today. Oh. Got the report just now. Didn't surprise me, baby. I recognize the symptoms as soon as we got down here last spring. <laughs> and I'm willing to bet you that Brother Man and Brother Man's wife were pretty certain of it too. More than likely explains why the usual summer migration to the coolness of the Great Smokies was passed up this year. The favor of hustling down here every whip stitch with the whole screaming tribe. <laughs> And why so many illusions have been made lately to Rainbow Hill? You know what Rainbow Hill is? It's a place that's famous for treating alcoholics and dope fiends in the movies. I'm not in the movies. <laughs> no, you don't take dope. Otherwise, you are a perfect candidate for Rainbow Hill, baby. And that's where they aim to ship you. Over my dead body. Well, my dead body, they'll ship you there. But nothing would please them better. Them brother man could get hold of the purse strings. How'd you like that, baby? Huh? You are doing just about everything in your power to bring it about. You are doing just about everything you can think of to aid and abet them in this little scheme of theirs. Quitting work. Devoting yourself to the occupation of drinking. 
Breaking your ankle last night on the high school athletic field. Doing what? Jumping hurdles at two or three in the morning. That's just fantastic. Got in the paper. Clocksdale Register carried a nice little item about a human interest story about a well-known former air fleet stage in a one-man track meet on the glorious hill high school athletic field. Who was slightly out of condition and couldn't quite clear that first hurdle. <laughs> Brother man claims he exercised his influence in keeping it from going out over AP or UP. One of those goddamn peas. But you know something, honey? You still have one big advantage. <laughs> you say something, Maggie? Big daddy dotes on you, honey. And he can't stand brother man or brother man's wife. <laughs> that monster of fertility, Maggie. You know how I know? My little expressions that flick across his face when that woman's holding forth on one of her choice topics, such as how she refused twilight sleep when the twins were delivered. Because she feels motherhood's an experience that ought to be experienced fully in order to fully appreciate all the wonder and the beauty of it. <laughs> Producing those no-neck monsters. <laughs> Oh, Big Daddy shares my attitude toward those two. As for me, well, I give him a laugh now and then. He tolerates me. In fact, I sometimes suspect that Big Daddy harbors a little unconscious lech for me. What makes you think Big Daddy got a lech for you, man? <laughs> the way he drops his eyes down my body when I'm talking to him. Just drops his eyes and my boobs and licks his own chops. That kind of talk is disgusting. <laughs> Anyone ever tell you you're an ass aching pure and brick? <laughs> I think it's mighty fine, that old fella. On the doorstep of death. Still takes in my shape with what I think is deserved appreciation. Yes, you should have been at that supper table, baby. You know, Big Daddy, oh, bless his old sweet soul. He is the dearest old thing in the world. But he does like to hunch over his food as if he preferred not to notice anything else. The main group was sitting side by side at the table directly across from him, just watching his face like hawks. They jawed and jabbed about the cuteness and the brilliance of the no neck monsters. <laughs> but I want you to know, all through dinner, never once, for one moment, did Brother Man and his partner stop exchanging pokes and pinches and kicks and signs and signals while they were like a couple of card sharks fleecing a sucker. And even Big Mama. Bless her old oh, sweet soul, she is not the brightest or the quickest thing in this world. She finally noticed at last and said, Goopa, what are you and me making all those signs at each other for? <laughs> I swear to goodness, I nearly choked on my chicken. You know your brother Goopa, he still cherishes the illusion that he took a giant step up the social ladder when he married Miss May Flynn. The Memphis Flynn's. <laughs> but I have a piece of Spanish news for Cooper. Flynn's never had a thing in this world but money. I lost that. Why, you know old Papa Flynn. He barely escaped doing time at the federal pen for shady manipulations on the stock market when his chain stores crashed. And as for May having been cotton carnival queen, as they so often remind us, lest we forget. Well, that is one honor that I don't envy her for. <laughs> Just... Sit on a brass throne on a techie floor right down Main Street. <laughs> Just bowing and smiling and blowing kisses to all the trash on the street. <laughs> Why, well, you before last? 
When Susan McFetus was singled out for that honor, you know what happened to her? No. You know what happened to poor little Susan McFetus? What happened to poor little Susan McFetus? <laughs> well, somebody spit tobacco juice in her face. Somebody spit tobacco juice in her face. <laughs> That's right. Some old drunk leaned out of a window at the Hotel Guy also and said, Hey, Queen. Hey, hey, that Queen. <laughs> And little Susie looked up, and she just flashed him this radiant smile, and he shot out a squirt of tobacco juice and hit Susan right in the face. What do you know about that? <laughs> what do I know about it? I was there, I saw it. Must have been kind of funny. <laughs> Susan didn't think so. She had hysterics. Scream like a banshee while they had to stop the parade, remove her from the throne. What are you looking at me like that for? Like what, Maggie? Well, you were looking at me just now before I caught your eye on the mirror and you turned away. I don't know how to describe it, but it froze my blood. I've seen you looking at me like that so often lately. What are you thinking of when you look at me like that? Wasn't conscious of looking at you, Maggie. Yeah, well, I was conscious of it. What are you thinking? I don't remember thinking anything, Maggie. But don't you think I know? Don't you think I know that? Know what? That I have gone through this hideous transformation. Become hard and frantic. Cruel. That's what you've been observing in me lately. How could you help but observe it? But that's all right. I'm not thin-skinned anymore. I can't afford to be thin-skinned anymore. Brick. Brick. You say something, Maggie? I was gonna say something. And I get lonely. Very. Everybody gets that. Yeah, but sometimes living with someone you love can be lonelier than living entirely alone. That someone you love doesn't love you. You wanna live alone, Maggie? God, I wouldn't. Did you have a nice shower? Mm-hmm. Is the water cool? No. It made you feel fresh, huh? Fresher. I know someday that would make you feel a lot fresher. What's that? A nice alcohol rub. Or cologne. A nice rub with cologne. I feel after a workout, but I haven't been working out, Maggie. Kept your shape, though. Thanks so, Maggie. Yeah, I almost thought the drink of men lost their looks. But I was plain and mistaken. Why, thanks, Maggie. <laughs> You're the only drink of men I know who never seems to put fat on. I'm getting soft, Maggie. Yeah. Well, it's bound to soften you up sooner or later. She's beginning to soften up skip a wink. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just never could keep my fingers off a sore. I wish you would lose your looks, Brick. Maybe to make the harder oh, time I say Maggie just a little more bearable. <laughs> yeah, but no such goddamn luck. No, I think you have actually gotten better looking since you got on the bottle. Yeah, a person who didn't know you would never think you had tense nerve in your body. Or a strained muscle. Of course, you always did have that detached quality. As if you were playing a game without much concern over whether you won or lost. And now that you have lost the game, <laughs> well, not lost. Just quit playing. You have that rare sort of charm that you usually only find in the... Very old, or hopelessly sick. Charm of the defeated. Oh, you look so cool. You look so cool. So enviably cool. Now look at here, boy. Let me show you how to get out of there. The blame croquet. 
Moon's appeared. It's why it's just beginning to turn a little bit yellow. You are a wonderful lover. Such a wonderful person to go to bed with. Nothing mainly because you were really indifferent to it, isn't that right? You never had any anxiety about it. You just did it. Naturally, easily, slowly, the absolute confidence, a perfect call, more like opening a door for a lady or seat behind a table than exp giving expression to any kind of longing for her. Yeah, your indifference made you wonderful, that lovemaking. That's strange. Oh, True. oh that's a beauty, yeah. You don't break about love, but you would never. Never, never make love to me again. I would go downstairs to the kitchen. I would pick out the longest and the sharpest knife I could find. I would stick it straight into my heart. <laughs> I swear that I would. But the one thing that I don't have is the charm of the defeated. No, my hat is still in the ring, and I am determined to win. <laughs> What is a victory of a cat on a hot tin roof? I wish I knew. Just staying on it, I guess, just as long as she can. You know, later tonight, I'm going to tell you that I love you. And maybe by that time, you will be drunk enough to believe me. Just like an eel, boy, just like an eel. Yep, they're playing croquet. And Big Daddy is dying of cancer. What were you thinking of when got you looking at me like that? What were you thinking of, Skipper? Oh, excuse me. Forgive me. The laws of silence don't work. No laws of silence don't work when something is festering in your memory or your imagination. Then laws of silence don't work. Just like closing a door and locking it on a house on fire and hoping forgetting that the house is burning, but not facing a fire doesn't put it out. Silence about a thing just magnifies and it grows and festers and silence becomes malignant. Get my crutch. It's lean on me. No. Just give him a crash. Lean on my shoulder. I don't want to lean on your shoulder! I want my crutch. You gonna give me my crutch? Or am I gonna get down on my knees? Here! Take it! Take it! Thank you. Thank you. Almost a scream at each other, Brick. Walls in his house of ears. But that is the first time in a long time that I have heard you raise your voice. Is that a crack in the wall? A composure? I think that's a good sign. Sign of nerves in a play on the defensive. It just hasn't happened yet, Maggie. What? A click I get in my head when I had enough of this stuff to make me tasteful. Do me a favor now. Maybe I will. What favor? Keep your voice down. <laughs> oh, I'll do you that favor. I'll speak in a whisper. No, shut up all together if you do me a favor. And make that your last drink till after the party. What party? Big Daddy's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> it's Big Daddy's birthday. You know this is Big Daddy's birthday. <laughs> I know. I forgot it. Yeah. Well, I remembered it for you. Good for you, man. All you got to do is just scribble a few lines on this card. You scribble something, man. Greg, it's got to be your handwriting. It's your present. I already gave him my present. This has got to be your handwriting. You can get him a present. I got one for you. No, I see you write the card down. What, and have him know you didn't remember his birthday? I did remember his birthday. Well, you don't have to prove you didn't. I don't want to fool that man about it. Oh, just write love brick, for God's no. sake. Come on, you got to. <laughs> 
I don't have to do anything that I don't want to do. You keep forgetting the conditions under which I agreed to go on living with you. Now, living with you? We occupy the same cage. You gotta remember the conditions agreed on. They're impossible conditions. All right, why don't you... Shush. Yeah. Oh, is somebody out there? May I enter for a moment? Oh, it's you. Come on in, May. Brick, is this thing yours? Well, sister woman, that's my Diana trophy. I won it at the intercollegiate archery contest on the old Miss campus. Well, it is a mighty dangerous thing to leave exposed around a house full of normal red-blooded children attracted to weapons. Well, normal red-blooded children attracted to weapons ought to be taught to keep their hands off things that don't belong to them. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie, if you had children of your own, you know how funny that is. Will you please lock this up and put the key out of reach? Sister woman, no one's plotting the destruction of your kiddies. Rick and I still have our special archer's license. We're going deer hunting up at Moon Lake as soon as the season starts. You know, I just love to run their dogs through chili. What's <laughs> Run, run, leap over obstructions. How's the injured ankle, Brick? Doesn't hurt. Just ditches. Well, oh, my. Brick, you should have been downstairs after supper. The kiddies put on a show. Polly played the piano and Buster and Sonny the drums. And then they turned out all the lights and Trixie and Dixie performed a toe dance in fairy costume with sparklers. Oh, me daddy just beamed. He just beamed. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> I am so sorry that we missed it. For me, why do you give dogs names to all your kiddies? <laughs> dogs names? Yeah, Dixie, Trixie, Buster, Sonny, Paul. It sounds like four dogs in the parrot. Maggie, why are you so catty? Because I'm a cat. But why can't you take a joke, sister woman? Well, nothing pleases me more than a joke that's funny. You know the real names of our kitties. Buster's real name is Robert. Sonny's real name is Saunders. Trixie's real name is Marlene. And hey, Dixie's Maggie, real name is... Hey, Oh, intermission's over. See you later. This is real name is. Maggie, being catty doesn't help things any. I know. Why am I so catty? Because I'm consumed with envy and eating up a lawn. Lay out your Shandong silk suit, one of those beautiful monogram silk shirts. If I can't get any trousers on over this plastic cat. Yes, you can. I'll help you. I'm not going to get dressed, Maggie. Well, will you at least put on a pair of white silk pajamas? Yes, I'll do that, man. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you so much. Don't mention it. Oh, Brick, how long does this have to go on? This punishment, haven't I done time enough? Haven't I served my term? Can I apply for a pardon? Maggie, you're spoiling my liquor. Lately, your voice sounds like you've been running upstairs to warn somebody the house is on fire. No wonder. No wonder. You know what I feel like? I feel all the time like a cat on a hot tin roof. And jump off the roof? Jump off it. Cats can jump off roofs and land on their four feet on engine. Do oh. it, for God's sake, do it. Do what? Take a lover. I can't see a man but you. Even with my eyes closed, I just see you. Why did you get ugly, Brick? When you get fat or ugly or something so I could stand it. The concert's still going on. Bravo, no necks. What do you like that door for? To give us a little privacy for a while. You know better, Maggie. Oh, I don't know better. Don't make a fool of yourself. I don't mind making a fool of myself over you. Why well, mind? Maggie, I feel embarrassed for you. Well, you feel embarrassed. But don't continue my torture. I can't live on and on under these circumstances. You agreed to accept I that can't. condition. I can't. Let go I of me. I can't. Son. Big. Son. What is it, Big Mama? Son, we just got the most wonderful news about Big Daddy. I had to run right off. What is this door to unlock for? You all 
all think there's robbers in the house. Fripp's getting dressed. He's not dressed yet. Well, that's all right. It won't be the first time I've seen Brick not dressed. Come on, open this door. <laughs> Shoot. Big Mama? Hey, I come through me and Goober's gallery door. <laughs> Where's Brick? Oh. Son! Hurry on out of there, son. I just had a second. I came up to tell you the news about Big Daddy. Oh, I hate locked doors in a house. I have noticed that you do, Big Mama, but people need some moments of privacy, don't they? No, ma'am, not in my house. What you took your dress off for? I thought that little uh, lace dress looked so sweet on you, honey. Well, I did too, but one of my cute little table partners used it for napkins. <laughs> oh, whew. You know, Big Mama, man, Goop are so touchy about those children, you just wouldn't dare to suggest that there might be any room for improvement. Brad, hurry on out! Shoot, Maggie, you just don't like children. That is not so. I adore them. We are brought up. Well, why don't you have some then and bring them up well instead of all the time picking on Goopers and Mays. Hey, Big Mama, Bits and Hugh got to go. They're waiting to tell you goodbye. Well, tell them to hold their horses. I'll be down in a jiffy. Yes, ma'am. Son, son, we just got the full report from the Oxner Clinic. Completely negative, son. Everything negative all the way down the line. There's nothing wrong with him except a little thing called a spastic colon. Son, can you hear me? He can hear you, big mama. Well, why don't he say something? Good Lord, news like that ought to make him shout. Made me shout, I can tell you. <laughs> I shouted and sobbed and fell down on my knees. <laughs> See, the bruises. Where hit my kneecaps? <laughs> Took two doctors to hold me back on my feet. <laughs> Big Daddy was just furious with me, but ain't that wonderful news? Oh, Big Mama! Oh, hold those people down there. Don't let them go. Now you get dressed. Brick, we're all coming up here for Big Daddy's birthday party on account of your ankle. How is his ankle, Maggie? Well, he broke it, Big Mama. Well, I know he broke it. I mean, does it hurt him much still? Well, I'm afraid I can't give you that information. You're gonna have to ask Brick if it hurts much still or not. It's Memphis, Miss Paula. Miss Sally in Memphis. Oh. All right, Sookie. Thank you. Hello? Hello, Miss Sally? How are you, Miss Sally? Uh, oh, uh, yes, well, I was just going to call you. Miss Sally, don't ever call me from the guy also lobby. No, Brick. too much talk in that lobby. I, I, what? Don't. No, I was just going to call you, yes. There's nothing serious wrong with Big Daddy. We just got the report. There's nothing wrong with him but a little thing called a spastic... No, 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 no. Spastic! A spastic colon! Oh! Maggie, would you please come out here and talk to this fool on the phone? I'm shouted breathless. Oh! Elastic. <laughs> Hello, Miss Sally. This is Brick's wife, Maggie. So nice to hear your voice. Can you hear mine? Now, what Big Mama wanted you to know is they got the report from the Oxner Clinic, and what Big Daddy has is a spastic colon. Spastic oh, colon. Well, I sure do hope I see you real soon, Miss Sally. Uh-huh, bye-bye now. <laughs> she heard me perfectly. 
I tell you, the thing I have discovered with deaf people is not to shout at them, but just oh. to enunciate clearly. Oh. <laughs> Miss Sally is a case. You know, Big Daddy says she's always got her hand out for something. I agree, but I don't think he gives her as much as he should. Big Mama, come on now. Listen, you can't wait no longer. I'm coming! Maggie. Mm. Oh. Well, shoot, don't play so dumb. I mean, has he drunk much of this stuff yet? <laughs> I think he had a hot ball after supper. Well, don't uh, about it. You know, some single men stop drinking when they get married. Others stop. Brick never touched liquor that before is not you and fair. He... Well, fair or not fair. I want to ask you a question. Do you make Brick happy in bed? Why don't you ask if he makes me happy in bed? Oh, I know that. Well, it works both ways. Well, something is not right. You're childless. My son drinks. Come on, big mama. When a marriage goes on the rocks, the rocks are there. Right? There. That's not fair. Well, Mama gone? She's gone. Oh, Brick. Our sex life didn't just peter out in the usual way. It's cut off short long before it's natural time to... And it is gonna revive again just as sudden as that. I'm confident of it. What I'm keeping myself attractive for. For a time when you'll see me the way other men see me. Look, Brick. See how high my body stays on me? Nothing's falling. Not a fraction. Other men still want me. My face looks strained sometimes. I have kept my figure as well as you've kept yours, and men admired. I still turn heads on the street. Well, last week in Memphis, everywhere I went, men's eyes just burned holes in my clothes. The country club and restaurants and department stores, there wasn't a man I met or walked by that didn't turn around when I passed by and look back at me. Why, at Alice's party for her New York cousins, the best-looking man in the crowd followed me upstairs and tried to force his way in the powder room, followed me to the door, tried to force his way in. Why didn't you let him, Maggie? Because <laughs> I'm not that common, for one thing. Not that I wasn't almost tempted. Oh, I might cheat on you sometime, Brick, since you are so insultingly eager to have me do it. But if I do, you can be damn sure that it will be in a time and a place where no one but me and the man could possibly know about it because I am not going to give you any excuse to divorce me for being unfaithful or anything else. Maggie, I wouldn't divorce you. Being unfaithful or anything else, don't you know that? Hell. Be relieved to know you found yourself a lover. Hell, I'm taking no chances. Nope. I'd rather stay here on this hot tin roof. A hot tin roof is an uncomfortable place to stay. Yeah, but I can stay on it just as long as I have to. You could leave me, Maggie. I don't want to. And I will not. 
Besides, you don't have a cent to pay for it. Except what you get from Big Daddy. And he's dying of cancer. Big Mama just said he wasn't, that the report was okay. That's what she thinks. Because she got the same story that they gave Big Daddy. And was just as taken in body as he was, poor things. But tonight, they're going to tell her the truth about it. Yeah. When Big Daddy goes to bed, they are going to tell her that he's dying of cancer. It's malignant and terminal. Does Big Daddy know it? Oh, hell. They ever know it? I mean, nobody says you're dying. You gotta fool them. They got to fool themselves. Why? What? Because human beings dream of life everlasting. That's the reason. Most of them want it on earth, not in heaven. Well, that's how it is, anyhow. Why did I put down my cigarette? I don't want to burn up the home place. Not with Maine Gooper and their five monsters in it. This is Big Daddy's last birthday. Maine Gooper know it. Oh, they know it. They got the first information from the clinic. That's why they rush down here with their no-neck monsters. Because, you know something? Big Daddy has no will. Big Daddy's never made a will in his life. So this campaign's afoot to impress him forcibly as possible with the fact that you drink and I've borne no children. I'm fond of Big Daddy. I am genuinely fond of that old man. I really am, you know. Yes, I know you are. I always sort of admired him. In spite of his coarseness, his four-letter words, and so forth. Because he is what he is. He hasn't turned gentleman farmer. He's still a Mississippi redneck. As much of a redneck as he must have been when he was just overseer on the Jack Straw in Peter Ocella place. But he got hold of it. And he turned it into one of the biggest and the finest plantations in the Delta. Well, I wasn't like Big Daddy. And this is his last birthday. Well, I'm sorry about it, but I'm facing the facts. It takes money to take care of a drinker. And that's the office I've been elected to lately. You don't have to take care of me. Yes, I do. Two people in the same boat have got to take care of each other. At least you want money to buy more Echo Spring when that supply is exhausted. Or will you be satisfied with 10 cent beer? You know, Brick, I have been so goddamn disgustingly poor all of my life. That's the truth, Brick. I'm not saying it isn't. I was had to suck up to people I couldn't stand because they had money and I was poor as Job's turkey. You know what that's like? I'll tell you. It's how you would feel a thousand miles away from Echo Spring and had to get back to it on that broken ankle without a crutch. That's how it feels to be poor as Job's turkey. Have to suck up to relatives you hated because they had money and all you had was a bunch of hand-me-down clothes and a few old moldy 3% government bonds. <laughs> My daddy loved his liquor. He fell in love with his liquor the way you've fallen in love with Echo Spring. And my poor mama, having to maintain some semblance of social position, 
keep appearances up on an income of $150 a month on those old government bonds. When I came out, the year I made my debut, I had two evening dresses. One mother made me from a pattern in vogue, and the other a hand-me-down from some snotty rich cousin I hated. The dress I married you in was my grandmother's wedding gown. So that's why I'm like a cat on a hot tin roof. You can be young without money, but you can't be old without it. You've got to be old with money. Because to be old without it is just too awful. You've got to be one or the other, either young or with money. You can't be old without it. That's the truth, Brick. Nothing left for me to do. I'm dressed. All dressed. There's nothing left for me to do. What am I gonna... Oh, my bracelets. You know, I thought a whole lot about it. Now I know when I made my mistake. Yeah, I made my mistake when I told you the truth about that thing with Skipper. I never should have confessed to the fatal error telling you that Maggie, shut up about Skipper. Skipper. I mean it. You gotta shut up about Skipper. You have to understand that Skipper and I... You don't think I'm serious. Are you fooled by the fact that I'm saying this quiet, Maggie? What you are doing is a dangerous thing to do. You are fooling with something that nobody ought to fool with. Now, this time I am gonna finish what I have to say to you. Skipper and I made love, if love you could call it, because it made both of us feel a little bit closer to you. You see, you son of a bitch, you ask too much of people. Of me, of him, of all the poor, unlucky damn sons of bitches that happened to love you, and there was a whole pack of them. Yes, there was a whole pack of them beside me and Skipper. You asked too goddamn much of people that loved you. You superior creature, you godlike being. So Skipper and I made love to each other to dream it was you, both of us. Yes, yes, truth, truth. What's so awful about it? I like it. I think the truth. Yeah, I shouldn't have told you. It was Skipper that told me about it, not you, Maggie. I told you. After he told me. Now what is the matter who told you first? Daddy. Little girl. What, well, Uncle Brad? Hey, little girl. You tell the folks to come up. You bring everybody upstairs. I can't stop myself. I'd go on telling you this in front of them all. Go on, little girl. You do what I told you. Now you talk. Yeah, yes, because it's got to be told. And you, you never let me. It was one of those beautiful, ideal things that they tell about in the Greek legends. It couldn't be anything else. You being you, that's what made it so sad. That's what made it so awful. It was love that could never be carried through to anything satisfying or even talk about plainly. Maggie, you've got to stop this. Brick, I tell you, you've got to believe me, Brick, when I say that I do understand all about it. I think it was noble. Now, can't you tell I'm sincere when I say that I respect it? My only point, the only point that I am making is that life has got to be able to continue even after the dream of life is all over. Well, I remember when we double dated in college, Gladys Fitzgerald and I and you and Skipper. It was more like a date between you and Skipper. Gladys and I just tagged along as if it was necessary to chaperone you to make a good public impression. You want me to hit you with this crutch? Don't you know I could kill you with this crutch? Oh, good Lord, man, you think I'd care if you did. One man has one great good true thing in his life. One great good thing, which is true. I had friendship with Skipper. 
You're naming it dirty. I'm not naming it dirty. I'm naming it clean. Not love with you, Maggie, but friendship with Skipper was the one great true thing. And you're naming it dirty. No, then you haven't been listening, not understood what I'm saying. I am naming it so damn clean to kill poor Skipper. You two had something that had to be kept on ice. Yes, incorruptible, and death was the only icebox where you could keep it. I married you, Maggie. Why would I marry you? You got to let me finish now. Believe me, I know that it was only Skipper who harbored even any kind of unconscious desire for anything not perfectly pure between you two. Wait, now let me skip a little. You married me early that summer. We graduated out of Ole Miss and we were happy, weren't we? We were blissful, yes. We hit heaven every time that we loved. But that fall, you and Skipper turned down wonderful job offers so you could keep on being football heroes, pro football heroes. You organized the Dixie Star so you could just keep on being teammates forever. But something was not right, me included, between you two. Skipper began hitting the bottle. You got that spinal injury, couldn't play the Thanksgiving game, and Chicago had to watch it on TV from attraction bid in Toledo. I joined Skipper. The Dixie Stars lost because poor Skipper was drunk. We drank that night all night in the bar at the Blackstone Hotel, and when cold day was coming up over the lake and we were coming out drunk to take a dizzy look at it, I said to him, Skipper, you have to stop loving my husband or make him let you admit it to him one way or another. And then he slapped me hard in the mouth and then ran all the way, I'm sure, without stopping once, all the way back to his room at the Blackstone. And when I came to his door that night with that little scratch like a shy little mouse at his door, he made that pitiful, ineffectual little attempt to prove that what I had said wasn't true. <laughs> And in that way, I destroyed him by telling him truth about his world. Truth that he and his world, that he was raised in yours and his world that told him couldn't be told. And after that, Skipper was nothing at all but a receptacle for liquor and drugs. Who shot Cock Robin? Ah, with my merciful arrow. Ah. You missed me. I'm sorry. Brick, I'm not good. Uh, I don't know why people pretend to be good. Uh, nobody's good. And the rich and the well-to-do can afford to respect moral patterns, convention on moral patterns. But I can never afford to. But I am honest. You give me credit for just that. I was born poor, raised poor, expect to die poor unless I can manage to get us something out of what Big Daddy leaves when he dies of cancer. Uh, but Brick, Skipper is dead. I am a I tried to kill you, ain't Maggie, and I failed, and I fell, little girl. Give me that crutch over here so I can get up off the floor. Here, you give your uncle his crutch. He's a cripple, honey. He broke his ankle last night jumping hurdles on the high school athletic field. How are you jumping hurdles for Uncle Break? Because I used to jump them. People like to do what they used to do, even when they stopped being able to do it. That's your answer, little girl. Now go on, go on out of here. Ah! Oh, you little monster, you little no-neck monster! You get out of here! You're jealous. You're just jealous because you can't have babies. <laughs> Do you hear that, Brick? They gloat over us being childless, even in front of that no-neck monster. been to a doctor in Memphis, a gynecologist. I have been completely examined. There is no reason why we can't have a child whenever we want one. And Brett, this is my time by the calendar to conceive. Are you listening to me, huh? Are you? Yes. Are you listening to yes. me? Yes, I hear you, Maggie. How in hell on earth do you imagine you're going to have a child by a man that can't stand you? 
Well, that's a problem that I will just have to work out. And they come. Daddy, congratulations. Crap. Well, you know what's on my I'll give your church a Coulton system. Bruce. Oh, yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> and you know what Gus Hammer's family gave in his memory to the church at Two Rivers? A complete new stone parish house with a basketball court in the basement. Hey, hey, preach. What's all this talk about my morals, preach? You think someone's going to kick off around here? Let it... <laughs> <laughs> they tied for a shot, and they tied the shots. And they did theory shots and their hepatitis shots and their polio shots. Oh, those Rick, why don't you put on a little Come music well, to start the body off with? You turn it on, mate. Okay. Yeah, we gave him that thing for third anniversary present. Got three speakers in it. Oh, nice. <laughs> turn that damn thing off. Where's my Rick? Where's my precious baby? Sorry, turn it back on. <laughs> <laughs> there I am. My precious baby. Now, what is that you've got in your hand, son? You put that liquor down. Your hand is made for something. Look at Rick, put it down. <laughs> <laughs> you bad boy. You're just my bad boy. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Look at that. Look at Rick. Just shy away. <laughs> He never could stand being kissed or made a fuss over. Well, I think because he always had too much of it. <laughs> so, boy, turn the thing off. Oh, I never could stand TV. I hated radio, but TV has gone at one word. <laughs> what am I sitting down here for? I want to be over there next to my sweetheart so I can hold his hand and love him up a little. <laughs> Preacher, hmm? will you come help me get out of oh. that jail? All right, now none of your tricks, Big Mama. Oh, what tricks? <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. Ever see a preacher in a fat lady's lap? Oh. <laughs> Folks, ever see a preacher in a fat lady's lap? Big Mama, with ocean! Fat lady's lap. Hey! You're too old and too fat for that kind of crazy kid stuff. Besides, oh. I won with your blood pressure 200 last spring, risking a stroke you mess around like that. about Big Daddy? He's 100%. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, he passed that examination with flying colors. And now that we know he doesn't have anything but a spastic cold, and I can tell you, I was so worried. I was bounced out of my mouth. Greg, honey, don't you want to give Big Daddy a present now? Oh, this is Big Daddy's biggest birthday. He's got <laughs> hundreds of presents and butchers. And... Oh, here it is, Big Daddy. What is it, Brick? I bet 550 <laughs> Brick don't know what that is. Well, the fun of presents is not knowing what's in them until you open them up. Oh, open up your present, Big Daddy. Yeah, open it yourself. I want to ask Brick something. Come here, Brick. <laughs> Brick? Honey, Big Daddy is calling you. Tell Big Daddy I'm crippled. I see you crippled. I want to know how you got crippled. Oh, look, it's a cashmere robe. Ooh, oh, you sound surprised, oh. Maggie. Well, I've never seen one before. Oh, that is funny. 
Well, I don't know how you could be surprised no. when you bought it yourself in Memphis last Saturday in Lowenstein's. And you know how I know? Well, she's the class. I know, because the sales lady that sold it to you waited on me, and she said, Miss Pollock, you know what? Your sister-in-law just bought a cashmere robe for your husband's father. <laughs> <laughs> well, sister woman, your talents are wasted as a housewife and mother. You really ought to be with the FBI. Hey! Hey, Rick! Tell me what they tell me is true. You done some jumping last night on a high school athletic field. <laughs> what they told me, too. Were you jumping or humping you doing out there? What you doing out there at 3 a.m. in the morning? Laying a woman on that center track? Now, Big Daddy, you're off the sick list now, and we're not going to excuse you for talking Wait. nasty in front of the preacher. Wait! I asked you, Brick, if you're cutting yourself a piece of poon tag out there last night on that center track, I thought maybe you were chasing poon tag. You tripped over something on the heat of the chase, that it? No, sir, I don't think so. Um, Reverend Tooker, let's you and I take a stroll on the widow's walk. What you doing out there at 3 o'clock in the morning? So jumping hurdles. Running, jumping no hurdles. No high hurdle got too high for me now. Because you drunk. Right? Sober, I wouldn't try to jump the low ones. Uh, uh, Big Daddy, uh, blow out the candles on your birthday cake. Yes. And I would love to propose a toast. Oh. To Big Daddy Pollard on his 65th birthday, the biggest cotton plant. I'll tell you, stop this. Now, stop it! Cut this crap! Big Daddy, now, I am not going to excuse you for talking like that on your birthday. Either. I'll not talk however I want to on my birthday or any other goddamn day of year. Anyone down here don't like it, know what they can do. You don't mean that. <laughs> what makes you think I don't mean it? I just know you don't mean it. You don't know a goddamn thing you never did. You don't mean that either. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I mean it. I put up with a whole lot of crap around here because I thought I was dying. And you thought I was dying, you started taking over. You could just now stop this business of taking over. I'm not going to die. I went to that laboratory and a goddamn exploratory operation. Nothing wrong with me but asbestic colon. I'm not dying of cancer, which you thought I was dying of, in I so? You think I was dying of cancer? And that's all I Do you have an idea I died of cancer so you take control of this place and everything on it? I got that impression. I seem to get that impression. You're loud voice everywhere. You're fed old body butter. The preacher! Shh. Fuck! Got him, preacher. You don't know what's got into you. I never saw you like Do you hear what I say? I say, fuck the goddamn preacher! I went through all the laboratory operation at all. <laughs> Just so I could know if you and me was both here. And it turns out I am. You ain't. That's my birthday present. That's my cake, my champagne, because for three years now, you've been gradually taking over. You've been bossing. Talking. Sashay and you fed old pot around the place. I made this place. I quit school at 10 years old. I went to work like a nigger in the fields. And I rose to be overseer. Straw on a cello plantation. Old straw died. I was old cello, old partner. The place got bigger. Bigger, 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 bigger. I did all that myself with old God darn help from you. Now, you just, you just now, you think you're just about to take over. I'm just about to tell you, you're not just about to take over. You're not just about to take over a gut darn thing. Is that clear to you now? Is that plain? Because I understood completely, nothing wrong with me but asbestic colon. <laughs> I mean, asbestic, I guess, but disgust. By the gut darn Liars! Liars I've had to put up with most damn hypocrisy I've lived with all these 40 years we've been living to go. Hey, Anna? Blow out the candles on the cake. Draw a deep breath. Blow out the goddamn candles on the cake. I'm being dead. What's the matter with you? All these years? You never believed I loved you. Huh? I did. I did. I did love you. I even loved your hate. 
and you're haunting me. Uncle. 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 Wouldn't it be funny if that was true? Call you Maggie, I call Brick. Oh, I was just delivering them to you. <laughs> Why'd you do that? Do what, Big Daddy? Well, I put kiss off your mouth like you spit on you. I don't know, I wasn't conscious of it. Uh, well, that woman of yours got a better shape on her than Goopers. <laughs> well, somehow, they both got the same look about them. What sort of look is that, Big Daddy? I don't know how to describe it. It's the same look. They don't look peaceful, do they? No, they sure in hell don't. Nervous as cats. That's right, they look nervous as cats. Nervous as a couple of cats on a hot tin roof. <laughs> That's right, boy. They look like a couple of cats on a hot tin roof. <laughs> it's funny, though. You and Gooper being so different, you pick out the same type of woman. <laughs> both of us married into society, big daddy. Crap. I wonder what it is, give them both that look. Well, they're sitting in the middle of a big piece of land. You know, 28,000 acres is a pretty big piece of land. They're squaring off on it. Each of them determined to knock off a bigger piece of it than the other whenever you let it go. <laughs> I got a surprise for those women. I'm not gonna let go of it for a long time now if that's what they're waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Big Daddy, you just sit tight, let us scratch each other's eyes out. Bet you love, I'm gonna sit tight and let them pitches scratch your eyes. <laughs> well, Goofy's wife, she's a good breeder. Hell, you got to admit, she's fertile. The supper to that, she had them all at the table. They had to put a couple of extra leaves at the table to make room for all of them. She's got five head of them now. Another one coming. Yeah, number six are coming. Six hell. She <laughs> probably drop a litter next time. <laughs> Rick, I swear to God, I, I don't know the way it happens. Wait, what happened, Big Daddy? You get yourself a piece of land by hook or crook. <laughs> things start growing on it, things accumulate on it. First thing you know, it's completely out of hand. <laughs> completely out of hand. They yeah, say nature hates a vacuum, Big Daddy. That's what they say. But sometimes, I think that a vacuum is a hell of a lot better than some of the things that nature replaces it with. Hey, <laughs> Somebody out there by the door? Yes, yeah, sir. Who? Somebody interested in what we say to each other. Cooper? Cooper! Did you call Cooper, Big Daddy? Oh, it was you. Did you want Gooper, Big Daddy? No. I don't want you. I want some privacy, huh? It's too hard in here to close them doors. I've had to close them fucking doors in order to have a confidential talk with my son, Brick. You just let me know. I'll close them. I hate eavesdropping on like any kind of sneak in a spine. Uh, Big Daddy. You stood on the wrong side of Moon Girl and threw you shatty. I was just... You're not sneaking and spying. You knew it. Oh, Big Daddy, you are so unkind for some reason to those people who really love you. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I'm gonna move you and go out of that room next to this. There's none of your goddamn business what goes on here at night between Brick and Maggie. You listen at night like a couple of rotten pico spies, and then you go and give a report on what you hear to Big Mama, and she does, she comes to me. She says, such and such and so and so, and it's easy to make me sick. I'm gonna move you and go out of this room next to this. I hate sneaking and spying, it makes me puke. They listen, do they? Yeah. They listen to give reports to Big Mama what goes on here at night between you and Maggie. They say you won't... You won't sleep where? You sleep over there on the sofa. 
They're true. Not true. Yeah, you don't like Maggie. Would you get rid of Maggie? What you doing there? Uh? Freshening up my drink. So, uh, you know you got a real liquor problem. Yes, sir. That's why you quit sports announcing and cause liquor problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I guess so. Oh, don't guess about it. It's too important. Yes, sir. Hey, will, will you just listen to me? Don't look at that damn chandelier. That's something else we picked up with it. Big fire sale in Europe. Life is important. Ain't nothing else to hold on to. A man that drinks is throwing his life away. Don't do it. Hold on to your life. Nothing else to hold on to. Come on, sit next to me so we can talk. I'll raise my voice. All right, Big Daddy. The walls have eels in this room. <laughs> you quit? How'd that come about? Some disappointment? I don't know. Do you? Well, I'm asking you, goddammit, how the hell would I know if you don't? I just got out there, I found I had a mouthful of cotton. I always two, three beats behind what's going on on the fields. And... Quit. Yeah, quit. Son. Too key and too much smoke, maybe a little lightheaded. Why is it so damn hard for people to talk? It's a nice, peaceful sounding clock. I like to hear it. Yeah. Got that clock and so I went to you and me and Big Mama on a damn cook stool. <laughs> Never had such an awful time in my life. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy. Them gooks over there. They gouge your eyeballs out. The Grand Hotel and Big Mama, she bought more stuff than you could haul a couple of boxcars. There's no crap. She's a boat, boat, boat. <laughs> it's lucky I'm a rich man. Why the lucky half of stuff is built here in the basement. Well, I am a... I'm a rich man. Mighty rich man. Guess how much I'm worth, Brick. Guess. Close on to 10 million. In cash and blue chip stocks outside of my new. 28,000 acres of the richest land outside the Valley Nile, but a man can't buy his life with it. He can't buy back his life with it when his life is spent. And that's a sobering thought. It's quite a sobering thought. And this thought I've been turning over my head over and over and over. Till tonight, I'm a sadder, wiser man, Brick, for this experience I've just gone through. One thing else I remember. Then in Morocco with them Arabs. I remember one, one day in Marrakesh, that old wall Arab city. I sat down on a broken down wall to have a cigar. <laughs> Fearful out there. This Arab woman, she stood in the road and she just looked at me till I was in bed. And she, she stood stuck still. Dusty hot road and looked at me and I was embarrassed. Listen to this. She had a little naked girl with her. Barely able to toddle. After a while, she put this child on the ground. Give a push, whisper something to her. This child come toward me. Barely able to walk, come toddling up to me. Jesus, it makes you sick to remember a thing like this. Reached out his hand, tried to unbutton my trousers. Can you believe me? You think I'm making this up? I went back to the hotel. Big Mama, get back. We're gonna 
Get out of this country. Instead of you all talking, Jag, tonight. Yes, sir. The human animal is a beast that dies, but the fact that he's dying, don't give him no pity for others. No, sir. It... Say something? Yes, sir. What? I have my crutch over here so I can get it up. Where you going? This short trip to Echo Spring. Huh? <laughs> What's that? Liquor candy. Yes, sir. The human animal is a beast that dies. If, if he's got money, he buys, he buys, he buys. I think the reason that he buys that everything he can buy is that in the back of his mind he's got this crazy hope that one of his purchases will be life everlasting, which he never can be. Never can be. Yes, sir. The human beast is... Hey, Big Daddy, you sure are shooting the breeze here tonight. Yeah. I've been quiet here lately. I spoke not a word. I just sat and stared into space. I had something heavy it went on my, my mind, but tonight that load is lifted. The sky looks different to me. You know what I like to hear the most? What? Solid quiet. Perfect, unbroken quiet. Why? Because it's more peaceful. Man, you're going to have plenty of that in the grave. Are you through talking to me? Why are you so anxious to shut me up? Well, sir. You have so often you say to me, Brick, I want to have a talk with you. But when we talk, it never materializes. You sit in a chair, and you gas about this and that, and I try to look like I listen. I try to look like I listen, but I don't listen not much. Communication's awful hard between people. Between you and me, it just don't happen. You have been scared? Have you ever felt downright terror or something? Mama. Brick? Hmm? Son, I, I thought I had it. Had what, Big Daddy? Cancer. I thought the old man made a bone with his legs cold and heavy head on my shoulder. <laughs> Big Daddy kept a tight mouth about it. Pig squeals. <laughs> but a man keeps a tight mouth about it, in spite of a man not having a pig's advantage. What advantage is that? Ignorance of mortality. That's a comfort. <laughs> man don't have that comfort. He's the only living thing that conceives of death and knows what it is. Others go without knowing, without any knowledge of it. That's the way that anything living should go. Go without knowing, without any knowledge of it. You know, a, a pig squeals. <laughs> Sometimes a man can keep a tight mouth back. <laughs> Sometimes a man can keep a tight mouth. I wonder if... What, Big Dad? If a whiskey highball would injure the spastic condition. No, sir. It might do it good. <laughs> Jesus, I can't tell you. The sky is open. <laughs> Crisis, open, boy! It's open! <laughs> you feel better, Big Daddy. Better. Hell, man. I can breathe all my life. I've been like a double up fist. I've been pounding, smashing, driving. I won't loosen up his double up hands. I won't touch things easy with him. You know what I'm contemplating? No, sir, what are you contemplating? Pleasure. Pleasure with women. Oh, I'll tell you something, you might not. This is my 65th birthday. I still have desire for women. It's mighty remarkable, Big Daddy. Remarkable? Admirable, Big Daddy. <laughs> you goddamn right, it's remarkable and admirable both. <clears throat> I just realized I never had me enough. I let many chances slip by because of scruples about it. Scruples, conviction, crap, all that stuff, a lot of bull, bull, bull. Took the shot of death. To make me see it now. That shot is lifted. I'm gonna cut loose. I'm gonna have me. What, what, what they call it? A boat? Ball. Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna have me a boat. Boat! Don't you never hear that phone ringing? I heard it way down the gallery. There's five rooms off this gallery that you go through. Why you go through this one? Huh? When the big mama goes out of the room, I can't remember what that woman looked like. 
<laughs> Hello. Big Mama comes back in the room. I see what she looks like. I wish I didn't. <laughs> Hello, Miss Sally. Hey, where you going? Out for a breather. Not yet, you ain't. Come back here. I sit down until I tell you the conversation is finished, young fella. I thought it was finished, Big Daddy. Yeah, lady, it ain't been gone. Excuse me, that's my mistake. I, I just want to feel that river breeze. You sit back down here. Why didn't you let me explain it to you? Well, oh, yes, that's good. Now, you come on down as soon as you can. Yes, Big Daddy's just dying to see you. Crap. All right, Miss Sally. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> no, Miss Sally, you know what she done. <clears throat> she called her doctor in Memphis to ask him what that spastic thing was. <laughs> and then she called back to tell <laughs> you gonna let me in here? No, I ain't. Now, I told you not to come and go through this room. You back on out go through them five other rooms. Big Daddy, you didn't mean those things you said to me, now, did you? Did you? Big Daddy, you didn't mean those awful, awful things that you said to me, did you? Sweetheart? Well, I know you didn't. Didn't mean those things in your heart. Brick? Son? Brick boy? Mammy. I'm happy, son. I'm happy. Why are you so restless? You got ants in your britches? Yes. Why? Something hasn't happened yet. What's that? Click. What click? Click, I get in my head, make me peaceful. I got to drink till I get it. Just a mechanical thing, it's something like a. Like a what? Like a. Like a switch. Clicking off in my head, it turned the hot light off and the cool night on, and all of a sudden, there's peace. I didn't have no idea that a son of mine. Let's turn it into a drunkard under my nose. Well, now you do, Big Daddy. The news has penetrated. Uh-huh, now I do. The news has penetrated. And so, if you'll excuse me. No, I won't excuse you. I, be, I, be, I better I be, I sit by myself till I hear that little click in my head. It's just a mechanical thing, but it usually don't happen unless I sit alone or unless I'm talking to no one. Well, uh, you got a long time to sit still and talk to no one, boy. Now, you talking to me, at least I'm talking to you. You're going to sit there. You will listen to me till I tell you this conversation is over. It's painful, Big Daddy. Why right, let it be painful? You sit in that chair. We'll remove this crutch. I can hop on one foot, and if I fall, I can't cross. Hey, if you ain't careful, you gonna crawl right off his plantation. And if I just, you gonna have to hustle your drinks along Skid Row. I'll come, Big Daddy. No, I won't. You my son. I'm gonna straighten you out. Now I'm straight. Now I'm gonna straighten out you. Yeah. I got the report tonight from the Oxner Clinic. All they can drink with little. Come on, Daddy, the fireworks is. Trixie, daughter, come on, come on. Polly, all right, go. Stay, you son of a bitch. The last say go. Okay. You sure as hell will. You say God you want to talk to me, you don't have a damn thing to say to me. I'm going to say to you when I'm telling you I'm going to live when I thought I was done. Oh, yeah. You son of a bitch. God. Ain't that? Ain't that important? Well, he said that. That's it. You now, sit back on her! Big Daddy, you're all bald up! No, I ain't all bald up! All bald, all bald up! No, don't you tell me what I am, you drunken whale. Big Daddy. You do what I tell you. I'm the boss here now. I'm back in the driver's seat here now! Big Daddy, what? Well, now, what the hell do you want to hear about? Why right are you now? shouting like that? Get, get out of here! Christ. Christ is right. Big lady. Give me my crutch. Give me my crutch, every day. What are you drinking? <laughs> you better think while you drink or give up drinking. 
Would you please give me my crutch so I can get up off this floor? Would you answer my question? What do you drink? Where you throwing your life away, boy? Like something disgusting. See, you Dad, picked I'm, up off the street. I'm in pain. I stepped on that foot. Yeah, I'm glad you're not in too much pain. Numb by liquor to feel some. <laughs> you spill my drink. Then. Listen, I'm going to make a bargain with you. All right? You tell me why you drink. I'll, I'll hand you one. Why do I do I'll, I'll, I'll pour a liquor myself and hand it right to you. Why do I do Yeah, why? You give me a drink, I'll tell you. Tell me first. I'll tell you one word. What word? Disgust. Now, how about that drink? <clears throat> But you tell me what you're disgusted with. You gotta tell me that first. Otherwise, being disgusted don't make no sense. <laughs> you try a hard bargain. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me what you're disgusted with. I can hop on one foot. If I fall, I can crawl. You won't lick at that bit. Yeah. I want it that bad. Rick. If I give you a drink, would you tell me what it is you're disgusted with? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll try to. You ever hear the word, mendacity? Sure. <clears throat> mendacity, one of those $5 words that cheap politicians throw back and forth at each other. Do you know what it means? Oh, it's lying and lies. Don't yes, sir. Lying and lying. Somebody's lying to you? Somebody lied to you? Big Daddy, the kids are shouting for you out Stay there. Stay out, Excuse me. Who's been lying to you? Has Marcus been lying to you? Has your wife been lying to you about something? No, not her. I... What? What did I see? The whole... The whole thing. What are you rubbing your head for? You got a headache? No. I'm, I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> because your brain's all soaked with liquor. <laughs> Is that a trouble? Wet brain. Hell, what do you know about this mentality thing? What do you think about those lines I have to put up with? Pretenses. Ain't that been dusty? Having to pretend stuff you don't think or act. Have any idea of how, for instance, pretend I care for Big Mama when I been able to stand the side sound and smell of that woman for years now, even when I lead her regular as a piston. Pretend to love that son of a bitch of a gooper wife me. See? Monkey out there, screeching like in a jungle, parents. I can't stand looking. You, I do. Care for. Would you have some kind of feeling? For oh, respect. I've lived with mendacity. Why can't you live with it? Hell, you got to live with it. Nothing else to live with except mendacity, is it? Yes, sir. There is something else you can live with. What's that? This right. Lift up. That's not living. That's dodging away from life. I want to dodge away from it. Why don't you kill yourself, man? Because I like to drink. Oh, God. I can't talk to you. I'm sorry, Big Daddy. Not as sorry as I am. I'm going to tell you something. A little while back when I thought my number was up before, I found it just this spasty cold and I thought about you. Should I, should I not, if the jig was up, give you this place? I, you know, I hate Cooper and me. I know they hate me. <laughs> I thought no. I thought yes. I couldn't make up my mind. Why not, hell? Should I subsidize a goddamn fool on the bottle? Like to, not like, maybe even love. Well, then, should I do that? Subsidize worthless behavior, rut, corruption? I understand. 
Well, if you do, are you smarter than I do? Hell, I don't want to stand. I'm going to tell you this frankly, to that. This day, I ain't made up my mind on the question. I ain't made out no will. Now, I don't have to. Pressure's off. I'm going to sit still. I'm going to wait. I'm going to see if you pull yourself together. If you don't, that's right, Big Daddy. You know, you think I'm kidding? No, sir, I know you're not kidding. Wait. Let's don't leave it like that. Like all them other talks we've always had, we just talk around things. Just always talk around things for some darn reason. <laughs> like something was left not spoken. Some avoided because neither one of us was ever honest enough with the other. I never lied to you, Big Daddy. Did I ever to you? No, sir. At least there's two people never lied to each other. But we never talked to each other. We can now. Well, Big Daddy, there just don't seem to be anything to say. You say that you drink to kill your disgust with lying? He said to give you a reason. Is liquor the only thing they'll kill us, Gus? Now, yes. But not once, huh? No. Not when I was young and believing. Believe what? Believing. I don't know what the hell you mean by believing. I don't think you know what you mean by believing. Yeah, you still got sports in your blood. Go back to sports now, son. You'll find us going. And sit in a glass booth describing contests I'm not fit for. Drinking a Coke, half bourbon, until I can stand it. That's no good anymore. Time just outran me, Big Daddy. Got that first. I think he's passing a buck. You know many drinking men? <laughs> I've known a fair number of that species. Could any of them tell you why he drank? Yep. You passing the buck. Things like time and disgust with mendacity. Crap. You gotta use that kind of language about things. That's not a proof bull. I ain't not buying it. <laughs> I had to give you a reason to get a drink. You started drinking when your friend Skepper died. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting nothing. But Goopa and me suggested something not exactly right in your... Not right? Well, not well. Exactly normal in your friendship. Oh, they suggested that too. I thought that was Maggie's suggestion. Who else's suggestion is it? Is it yours? How many others thought that Skipper and I were... Uh... Well, you hold on, boy. Just hold on. I knocked around my tongue. Well, what's that got to do with anything? I'm saying to you, will you please... Who else's you know, suggestion on. is it? I bombed, I bombed around this country. I slept in hobo jungles and railroad wires. Uh, you I think so, too. You call me your son for... and a queer. Wait, Frazier! What you want? Good the gentleman's me. lavatory. <laughs> well, uh, preacher, we well, back on now. You walk down to the other end of the gallery, and you use uh, the bathroom connected to my bedroom. If you can't find it, <laughs> just ask someone. Uh, thanks. Uh, Hard talk. <clears throat> well, I've seen all things. I understood a lot of them, you know. I'd worn my shoes through. I hopped. I hopped off a yellow dog freight car. Half a mile down the road. Slapping away in a cotton outside of gin. Jack Stroll. Pete old cello. It took me in. Hired me to manage this place, which grew in this one. Boy, Jack Straw died, and old Peter Ocello, 
He stopped eating like a dog does when his master's dead. He died too. Christ! I'm just trying to tell you, I do understand some things. Don't you understand? Skip us dead, and I am not quit eating. No! You have started drinking! Ah. You think so too. You think so too. You think so too, Big Daddy. Oh, come on. You think me and Skipper did sodomy? No, now hold on a minute. Yo. You think we did dirty hey, things no, no, between no, us, no, Skipper no, no, and me? I don't think fight. nothing. I you don't know we nothing. Of... I'm just trying to tell you. You think we played dirty now, old men? Now, hey, a come couple on of sissies. Hey, boy. Come on up. Hey, 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 Jesus. Oh. <laughs> come on, now. Give me your hand. I don't want yours. I want yours. Come on. Hey, boy, why are you sweating like that? <laughs> you you're like in front of mom. You shocked me, Big Daddy. Big Daddy, you shocked me. I'm talking so casually about a thing like that. Don't you know how people feel about things like that? Don't you know? How disgusted people are about things like that. Why, well, don't miss. When it was discovered that a pledge to our fraternity skippers and mine had did a attempted to do an unnatural thing with a... We not only dropped him like a hot rock, we told him to get off the campus. And he did. He got all the way to... Well, North Africa. <laughs> Last I heard. Yes, man, I'll just come back far away from that. Just come back from the other side of the moon. This country, son. I'm not shocked by anything, huh? Oh, well, I, I, I've always lived with too much space around me to be infected with the idea of other people. One thing you can grow in a big place is more important than cotton. That's tolerance. Why, why I can't? Exceptional friendship. Real, real deep, deep friendship between two men be respected. It is. As something decent and It can't be, for God's sake. All of us fairies. I told me and go by some. Break my and Gooper. Break all dirty lies and liars. Skip and me had a clean, true thing between us practically all our lives till Maggie got the idea that you're talking about. Normal, no. It's too rare to be normal. Any true thing between two people is too rare to be normal. Amen. Oh, once in a while he put a hand on my shoulder. <laughs> I put mine on his. Oh, while we're touring the country and pro football. And we share hotel rooms. I reach my hand across the space between the two beds to shake hands to say goodnight. Yeah, one or two times. Brick, and no one thinks that's not normal. They're mistaken. It was a pure and true thing. That's not normal. Why so damn hard for people to talk? There they go. There they go. Why did Skipper crack up? Why have you? All right, Big Daddy. All right. We're finally going to have that real true talk you wanted to have. Too late to stop it now. We gotta carry it through. We're gonna cover up a subject. Uh-huh. Maggie declares that uh, Skip and I went into pro football after we um, left Ole Miss because we're scared to grow up. We wanna keep tossing them long, long, high, high passes that can't be intercepted, except by time. And we did. We kept it up for one season. That fall, Maggie laid down a law to me. She say, now or never. So I, I married Maggie. I was married again, Bill. Yeah, great. <laughs> 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 he was the greatest. 
Went on the road that far with the Dixie Stars. Made a great show of being the world's best sport. <laughs> More tall, bass skin cap, shako, they call it. And a mole skin coat. A mole skin coat now. Dye red. <laughs> Maggie the cat. <laughs> Then Skipper, he had that fever which come back on him. And I got that injury and a touch of bursitis. And I lay in a hospital bed and watched the tele games on TV. I saw Maggie on the bench next to Skipper. Burned me up the way she hung on his arm. You know, I think Maggie always felt kind of left out. Because she and me never, never got much closer than two people ever get in bed, which is not any closer than two cats on the fence. <laughs> so she took this time to work on poor dumb Skipper. He was a less than average student at Ole Miss, you know mm -hmm. that. Poured in his mind a dirty, false idea that what we were, him and me, was a frustrated case of that pair of old sisters that live in this room. Jack Straw and Peter Ocello. Poor Skipper went to bed when Maggie proved that wasn't true. And when it didn't work out, he thought it was true. And Skipper broke into... Like a rotten stick. Nobody ever turned so fast to a lush or died of it so quick. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? With what? A fast story. What that was about. Something left out of that story. What did you leave out? I left out a long distance telephone call which I had from Skipper, in which he made a drunken confession to me, and on which I hung up. That was the last time we ever spoke to each other in our lives. You must have said something to him before you hung up. What could I say to it? Anything. Something? Nothing. Just hung up? Just hung up? No, uh huh? <laughs> Anyone now? We have just tracked down the lie with which you discussed it with Brick. Which you're drinking to kill your disgust with. You've been passing the buck. This disgust with me last day is disgust with yourself. You dug the grave of your friend and you kicked him in it before you faced truth with him. Here's truth. Not mine. All right then. All right, but you won't face it, will you? Who can't face the truth, can you? Well, you got that when you stop passing a rotten buck off for me or me again, boy. How about these happy Scott. birthday congratulations? These many, many happy returns of the day when oh. everybody knows there won't be any except you. Big A, they're starting the fireworks. Come on, Big Let's get out here on the... on the gallery and uh, watch the fireworks. Hey, no, 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 nobody's gonna go out right now. Just won't you finish what you were saying? I don't remember. Finish what you were saying! Leave the place to May and Gooper and their five same little monkeys. Leave the place? All 28,000 acres of the richest land inside the valley now. You said I was leaving this place to Gooper or anybody. It's my 65th birthday, you. Ah, <laughs> uh, 15. 20 years left in me. Oh, I'll leave you. 
Go bury you! I have faith for you, Coffin. All right, that is your many have it return. Now let's get out here on a gallery. Yeah. And what? <laughs> Hey, they're lying to me, Harry. They lying? About to report from the police? Where'd they find that? Cancel me, huh? I mean, that's the system we live in, Big Daddy. Liquor's one way out, death is the other. I'm sorry, Big Daddy. Hey. My, my head doesn't work anymore. It's, very, it's hard for me to understand how anybody could care whether he lived or died or was dying or cared about anything except whether or not there's liquor left in the bottle. So I said what I said to you without thinking. But anyway, we've been friends. And being friends is telling each other the truth. I told you, you told me. Christ, damn, all lying sons of lying bitches. Let us go. Yes. All lies. All lies. Line down, love. When the name of God was going on in this room. Come here, come here, come here. 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 Come Freed their slaves ten years before abolition. My great great grandfather gave his slaves their freedom five years before oh, the war between the states sake, started. Oh, Maggie's climbed back up in her family tree. What may? I think Big Daddy just wore out. He loves his family, loves to have them around him, but it's a strain on his nerves. <laughs> he won himself tonight. I think he got all worked up. Well, I think he's remarkable. Yes, just remarkable. Did you notice how much food he ate at that table tonight? Did you notice the food that man put away? Why, he ate like a horse. I hope he doesn't regret it. He had a big piece of uh, cornbread with lots of molasses on it and helped himself twice to Hop and John. Big Daddy loves Hop and John. And candied yams. <laughs> That man put enough food away at that table to stuff a field hand. <laughs> Hope he doesn't have to pay for it later on. What, Goopa? Goopa says he hopes Big Daddy doesn't have to suffer tonight. Goopa says, Goopa says, why should Big Daddy suffer for satisfying a normal appetite? Well, there's nothing wrong with that man but nerves. He's sound as a dollar. That's why he ate so much at supper. <laughs> Why, he had such a load off his mind, knowing he wasn't doomed to what he thought he's doomed to. Bless his old sweet soul. Where is Brick? Outside. Drinking. Well, can't I see that boy's drinking without you constantly telling me he's drinking? Good for you, big mama. Other people drink, will drink, have drunk. 
As long as they make that stuff and put it in bottles. Oh, that is the truth. <laughs> you know, I have never trusted a man that didn't drink. Brad! He's out on the gallery, Mama. I'll get him so we can talk. Don't know what this mysterious family conference is all about. <gasps> oh. oh, what is wrong uh, here? <laughs> you all have such long faces. Koopa, would you please open that door so we can circulate some air through this room? I think we better leave that door closed, Big Mom, until after the talk. Preacher? Would you open that door? I sure will, Big Mama. Well, I just didn't think we ought to take any chance on Big Daddy's hearing a word of this discussion. Oh, well, I swan. Nothing's gonna be said in this house that Big Daddy can't hear if he wants to. I think this house is the coolest in the Delta. Rick, they're gonna tell Big Mama about Big Daddy, and she's gonna need you, honey. And the rectory at Prowl's Point, in his memory. Don't say nobody shoot the fools your church for you. Maggie! Are you coming with Rick? Brick, I have a strange feeling. I have a peculiar feeling. What feeling? That Brick said something he shouldn't have said to Big Daddy. Now, what could Brick have said to Big Daddy that he shouldn't have said? Well, Big Mama. Now, wait. There he is, my Brick. My precious. Son, I wish you wouldn't. Wish you didn't have to, Big Mama. Brick, you break my heart. Well, now that we're all assembled. You can talk. <clears throat> what? What is it? <laughs> Why are you all surrounding me like this and staring at me and making little signs at each other and you whispering? Now well, calm yourself, Big Mama. Calm yourself yourself. How can I calm myself if you all staring at me as if big drops of blood were going to pop out on my face? Now, Doc Ball. Doc Ball. Big Mama wants to know the complete truth about the report we got from Malcolm the Clinic. On Big Daddy's condition. Yeah, you know, Big Daddy's condition. What? We got to face it. Well... Uh, what? Is there something I don't know? Yes. Is somebody lying? Well... Now, Mama. Mama. Is there some... I want to know. What? I want to know. What is it? Break, why don't you sit with What is it? Well, you do that, Maggie. I'm a restless cripple. I got to stay on my crutch. I've never seen a more thorough examination than Big Daddy Pollitt was given in all my experience with the Oxner Clinic. It's one of the best in the country. It is the best in the country, bar none. Uh, of course, they were 99, 9 tenths percent sure before they even started. Sure of what? Sure of what? Mama, what? you be a brave girl. But now you see, Big Mama, they cut a piece off this growth, a specimen of the tissue. Growth? You told it, Big Daddy. No, wait. You, you told me and Big Daddy that there was nothing. Mama, just let Doc Ball talk. talk. We tell you now, but a little spastic yes, condition. Yes, that's what we told Big Daddy. But now, you see, they put this piece of tissue through the laboratory. And I, I'm sorry to say the tests were positive on it. It's, well, it's malignant. Tessa? Uh-huh. Tessa? Big you know we Why is this cutting out of her? It Why? Involved too much, Big Mama, or too many organs affected. The liver's affected, Big Mama, and so's the kidneys. Both is gone way past what they call a, um... a surgical. Yes, <laughs> it's gone past the knife. You see, that's why he's turned yellow, Mama. Get away from me, Rick! 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 Oh, I want, I want, I want my only son! Big Mama, did Rick! you say only son? Was that make me? Rick! He's so upset he went back out. Rick! Let me tell you, Mama. <laughs> no, you know my blood. Yeah, Mama, I am your son. Just listen to me. He's your son. He's your firstborn. Cooper never liked Daddy. That is not true. I think I'd better slip away at this point. Good night. Uh, good night, everybody, and God oh. bless you all on this place. Well, Mama. This is just a mistake. It is. It's a, it's no, a bad dream. That's we're, all. We're going to keep Big Daddy as comfortable as we dream. can. Look, Big Mama, 
In my opinion, Big Daddy is having some pain, but he's not going to admit that he has it. Cooper, now I think Mate, that you... just, just shut up. Just a bad dream, that's all it is. Mama, I think Big Daddy ought to be started on morphine. <laughs> Nobody is going to give Big Daddy morphine. Now, Big Mama, when that pain strikes, it's going to strike mighty hard. Big Daddy's going to need that needle to bear it. Nobody is going to give Big Daddy morphine. Now, Big Mama, you don't want to see Big Daddy suffer. You know you don't. Well, I, I'm leaving this stuff here. In, so if there's a sudden attack, you all won't have to send up yeah, for Yeah, I know how to give a hypo. Nobody's going to give Big Daddy morphine. May took a course in nursing during the war. Somehow I don't think Big Daddy'd want me to give him a hypo. Oh, you think he'd want you to do it? Well, uh, Big uh, Doc Boss going. Yes, I, I gotta be going. Now keep your keep your chin up. Big no. <laughs> You'll keep both chins up, aren't you, Big Mom? We surely do appreciate all you've done, Doc. I mean, we're truly obliged. Oh, it's just no, not true. Mama, it's not true. I know it's not Mama, true. Mama, you're gonna have to be a brave girl. <laughs> Look, these tests are infallible. Why are you so determined to see your father dead? Mama! I know what Big Mama means. Oh, do you? I think I do. Well, for a newcomer in this family, you sure do show a lot of understanding, Maggie. Yeah, well, understanding is needed on this place. I guess you must have needed a lot of understanding in your family, Maggie, with your father's liquor problem, and now you've got Brick with his. Brick does not have a liquor problem. Brick is devoted to Big Daddy. This whole thing has been a terrible strain on him. Margaret. Brick is Big Daddy's boy, but he does drink too much. And you've got to cooperate with me and Big Daddy. You've got to cooperate with us, Margaret, and get Brick to straighten himself out and pull himself together so that he can take hold of things. Take hold of what things, Big Mama? The place. <laughs> Big Mama, you had a shock. Yes, we've all had Let's a shock. Let's be realistic yeah, here. Big Daddy would never, would you, never be so foolish, foolish enough to, to... to... put this place in irresponsible hands? Big Daddy is not going to put this place in anybody's hands. When you get that through your hands, Big Daddy is not going to die. He's not going to die. Mommy, Mommy, Big Mommy, we are all just as hopeful and optimistic as you are about Big Daddy's <gasps> prospects. And we have faith in prayer. But nevertheless, there are certain things that have to be discussed and dealt with because otherwise... Eventualities have to be considered, and now is the time. May, get my briefcase out of our room, please. Oh. Mama, what you said just now is not at all true, and you know it. I have always loved Big Daddy in my own quiet way. I never made a big show of it. And I'm sure Big Daddy's always been fond of me in his own quiet way, too. And he never made a big show of it, either. Maybe Thank you. Of course, my relationship with Big Daddy is going to be different than Brick's. And you always had to carry a bigger load of the responsibilities than Brick ever had to carry. He never carried a thing in his life but a football or a highball. Mate, will you let me talk, please? Yes, honey. Look, a 28,000-acre plantation is a mighty big thing to run. Almost single-handed. Run? What are you talking about? You never had to run this place. You're talking like Big Daddy's dead in his grave. Run this place. Why, you, you never did anything except handle a few business matters for him, and, and you had your law practice at the same time in Memphis. Oh, mommy, Mommy, Big Mommy, let's be fair. Why, Cooper has given himself body and soul to keeping this place up for the past five years. Big. Big Daddy's health started failing. <gasps> Cooper won't say it. Cooper never thought of it as a duty. He just did it. Now, what'd Brick do? He just kept living in his past glory at college, still a football player at his age. God, who are you talking about? <coughs> Brick? A football player? He's not a football player, and you know it. Brick is a TV sports announcer and one of the best-known ones in the country. I'm talking about what he was. Well, I just wish you would stop talking about my husband. Look, I got the right to discuss my brother with the other members of my own family, which don't include you. Now, why don't you go out there and drink with Brick? I've never seen such malice toward a brother. What about his for me? Why can't he stand to be in the same room with me? This is a deliberate campaign of vilification for the most disgusting and sordid reasons on earth, and I know what they are. It's avarice, avarice and greed, greed. Oh, I am going to scream. I mean it, Mama, please sit with me, please. Oh, Mommy. Oh, Mommy, Mommy, dear Mommy, precious Mommy, I am so sorry. How beautiful. Oh, oh. How touching this display of devotion. 
Do you know why she's childless? She's childless because that big, beautiful athlete husband of hers won't sleep with her. You won't let me do this in a nice way, will you? All right. I don't give a goddamn whether Big Daddy likes me or doesn't like me or did or never did or will or never will. I'm appealing to a sense of common decency and fair play. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I have resented Big Daddy's partiality to Brick ever since Brick was born in the way I have been treated. Like I was barely good enough to spit on. Sometimes not even good enough for that. Your big Daddy is dying of cancer. It has spread all through him. It's attacked all his vital organs. And right now, he is sinking into uremia. Now, you all know what uremia is. It's poison. The whole system, due to the failure of the body, to eliminate its poisons. Poisons and hearts and minds, that's poison. I am asking for a square deal. And by God, I expect to get one. But if I don't, I'm not a corporation lawyer for nothing. I know how to protect my own interests. Storm coming now. Oh, a late arrival. Oh, behold, the conquering hero He's comes. The fabulous Brick Pollard. Remember him? Why, who could ever forget him? He looks like he's been injured in the game. You're afraid you have to warm the bench to Sugar Bowl this year, Brick? Or was it the Rose Bowl you made that famous run in? The Punch Bowl. It was the Punch Bowl, honey. The cut glass Punch Bowl. That's right. I'm getting my bowls mixed up. <laughs> Why don't you just stop venting your malice and your envy on a sick boy? Oh, hush. You hush, you do. All of you hush. Storm. Storm coming. Suki, tell Lacey put the top up my Cadillac, will you? Yes, Mr. Pollock. All right, look, Mama. You know it's necessary for me to go back to Memphis in the morning to represent Parker State in a lawsuit. Is it, Goopa? Yes. That's why I'm forced to bring up Tell the problem. It's too important to be put off. If Rick was sober, he ought to be if in Rick on this. Rick is present. We're present. Well, good. Then I'll now give you this outline that my partner Tom Bullet and I have drawn up. It, it's, a, it's a sort of dummy trusteeship. Oh, that's it. You'll be in charge with you and dole out remittances. It's not. Not final or anything like it. It's just a preliminary outline. But it does provide just a basis. It, it, it's a design. It, it's a possible, feasible plan. Oh, yes, I bet it's a plan. It is a plan to protect the biggest estate in the Delta from irresponsibility and... Now, you just listen to me, all of you! Go ahead, you, you just put that away before I grab it out of your hand and tear it up! I don't know what the hell is in it, and I don't care what the hell is in it. Oh, I'm talking in Big Daddy's language now. I'm his wife, not his widow. I'm his wife, and I tell you. What I have here. I tell you that it's just a plan. What you have there, you just put it away. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see the outside of the envelope of it. Preliminary basis plan. Oh, well. Oh, you know what I say? I, what is it that Big Daddy says when he's, when he's, uh, disgusted? Big Daddy say crap when he's disgusted. Yes, crap. I say crap, too. Yes, I think I say crap. I do not think coarse language is called for in this situation. Something in me is deeply outraged by hearing you talk like this. Nobody is taking nothing till Big Daddy lets go of it. And maybe not even then, just possibly not even then. Suki, hurry up, get that porn furniture covered. You want the paint to come off? Lacey, put my car away, will you? Where are the keys to the car? In your pocket, huh? I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I need you. I need you. Oh, <laughs> will you look at that? Oh, my. Rick looks just like he used to when he was a little boy. <laughs> when he'd been playing wild games and I'd holler myself hoarse and he'd come home all sweaty and pink-cheeked and sleepy with his dark hair shining. Time goes by so fast. Nothing can outrun it. Death commences too quickly. Almost before we're acquainted with life, we meet the other. Oh, we all just got to love each other and stay close. Close, especially now that this dark thing has come and moved in. Brick. Son of Big Daddy. 
Big Daddy does so love you. You know what would be his fondest dream come true? If before he passes on, Big Daddy has to pass on. You would give him a child of yours, a grandson, as much like his son as his son is like Big Daddy. I know that's Big Daddy's dream. Such a pity Maggie and Britt can't oblige. Big Daddy's on the gallery. I can't stay in this room. You'll see my eyes. Oh. Can I come in? Did that storm wake you, Big Daddy? What storm are you talking about? Went outside or hella blue in the air. Excuse me. I heard somebody loud talk. Like something important was being discussed. What was a pal wow all about? Couldn't help it, Big Daddy. What's that pregnant looking envelope you're putting back in your beef case? Oh, that's, uh, it's nothing. It's just nothing, sir. It's nothing at all. <laughs> no. Looks like a whole lot of nothing, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all know that story about the young married couple? Yes, sir. Hello, Brick. Hello, Big Daddy. Young married couple took Junior out to the zoo on Sunday, inspected all of God's creatures in the cages with satisfaction. This afternoon was a warm afternoon in spring. That elephant had something else on his mind that was bigger than peanuts. You know this story, Brick? No, sir, I don't know it. You see, in the cage adjoining, there was a young female elephant in heat. Oh, big daddy. What's the matter, preachers going in there? All right, that female elephant next door was permeating the atmosphere about her with a powerful and uh, exciting odor of female fertility. Huh? Ain't, ain't that a nice way to put it, Brick? Yes, sir. Nothing wrong with it. Brick says nothing wrong with it. Now, Big Daddy. So this old bull elephant, he still had a couple of fornications left in him. He reared back his trunk, got a whiff, an elephant lady next door. <laughs> Begin to paw the dirt in his key, but his head against a separate partition. And first thing you know, there was a conspicuous change in his profile. <laughs> Very conspicuous. Ain't I telling this story in decent language, Brick? Yes, sir, too fucking decent. So, little boy. He looked at it, he said, what's that? Mama said, well, it's nothing. His papa said, she's bald. <laughs> you didn't laugh at that story, did you, Brick? No, sir, I didn't laugh at that story. What's the smell in this room? No, Sibrick. You notice the powerful and obnoxious odor of mendacity in this room? Yes, sir. I think I do, sir. There's no nothing more powerful, is there, Brick? No, sir. And then nothing more obnoxious. Brick agrees with me. The odor of mendacity is a powerful and obnoxious odor. The storm hadn't blown it away from this room yet. You notice a gooper? What, sir? What about your sister woman? You notice the unpleasant odor of mendacity in this room? My big daddy, I don't even know what that is. You can smell it. Hell, it smells like death. Oh, my sweet God. What's the matter with that fat woman over there, Lord, with diamonds? <laughs> hey, what's your name? What's the matter with you? She just had a slight dizzy spell, Big Daddy. 
Better watch that, big mama. Stroke is a bad way to go. Oh, Rick, look. Big Daddy has on your birthday present to you. <laughs> your cashmere robe. Oh, I think that is the softest material I have ever, ever felt. Yeah. It's my soft birthday, Maggie. It's not my gold or my silver birthday. My soft birthday. Everything's got to be soft, Big Daddy. My soft birthday. Oh, look, Rick. He's got on his Chinese slippers that I gave him. But I haven't given you my big present yet. But now I will. Now's the time to present it to you. I have an announcement to make. What kind of announcement? Sports announcement, man. An announcement of life beginning. A child is coming. Sired by brick and out of Maggie the cat. That's my birthday present to you on this birthday. Girl has life in her body, that's no lie. Go up. I want my lawyer in the morning. Where are you going, Big Daddy? Son, I'm going up to the roof, to the Belvedere on the roof, to look over my kingdom, before I give up my kingdom. To the 8,000 acres of the richest land this side of the valley now. Sweetheart, sweetheart, can I come with you? Rick, do you mind if I had one small shot of that liquor? Oh, help yourself, Gooper boy. Yeah, I think I will. Of course, we all know this is a lie. May, be still. I will not be still. I know she made this up. May, damn it, I said shut up. Gracious, I had no idea that my little announcement was going to provoke such a storm. That woman is not pregnant. Oh, who said she was? Well, she did. Well, the doc didn't. Doc Ball didn't. I haven't been to Doc Ball. Yeah, who'd you go to, Maggie? One of the best gynecologists in the South. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I see. Can I have his name, please? <laughs> no, you may not, Mr. Prosecuting Attorney. Well, he doesn't have a name. He doesn't exist. Oh, he exists, all right. And so does my child, Rick's baby. You can't conceive a child by a man who won't sleep with you. <laughs> we hear you in here. We know it's a lie. We hear you. He won't sleep with you. So don't imagine you can put a trick over on us to fool a dying man with a... Did you hear that, Cooper? Did you hear that? Sounds like the pain is struck. Let's leave these two little lovebirds together in that nest. Liar. Thank you for keeping still. Okay, Maggie. That was gallant of you, save my face. I used to think that you were stronger than me and I didn't want to be overpowered by you. But now since 
you've taken to let go. I guess it's bad, but now I am stronger than you. And I can love you more truly. I really have been to a doctor, Brick. And I know what to do. And this is my time by the calendar to conceive. I understand, Maggie. And how are you gonna conceive a child with a man in love with his liquor? By locking up his liquor and making him Satisfy my desire before I unlock it. Is that what you've done? <laughs> Look and see. That cabinet is mighty empty compared to before. Well, yeah, I'll be a son. <laughs> So tonight, we are going to make that lie true. And when that's done, I'll bring the liquor back here, and we'll get drunk together. Here tonight, in this place that death is coming to. What do you say? I don't say anything. I guess there's nothing to say. Oh, you weak people. You beautiful, weak people who give up with such grace. What you want is someone to take hold of you. Gently. Gently with love. Hand your life back to you like something go. Oh, I do love you, Brick. I do. Wouldn't it be funny if that was true?